let's just get started with the lecture on MATLAB data structures. Okay, so far in the course, we have seen scalars, vectors, and matrices. And in this lecture, we're gonna look at more powerful data structures, okay? Um, all right, so here I'm creating a, a vector, vec, with the values one, three, five, nine. Now, if I want to store the value 100 in index one, that is how I do it. Uh, if I wanted to store a character in the second index, let's see what happens if I run this. You see, MATLAB is converting that into a numeric uh, value and then storing it. The class or type of this vector is double. Now let's try to do something, mm, I would say crazy. Uh, you know, so I'm trying to assign the third element uh, with a vector of values from one to seven. So let's see what happens. Uh, so clearly MATLAB is throwing an error saying left and right sides have a different number of elements. The same error pops up if you try to assign probably a string or a character array. In this case, I'm, I'm using a character vector hello with five characters and it's gonna throw exactly the same uh, error. Now this brings us to the question uh, as to, you know, uh, can we store elements of different types and different sizes in the same MATLAB variable? The answer is yes. You would have to use either cell arrays. Cell arrays are similar to vectors and matrices in syntax. We'll learn about these very shortly. The other option is to use structures. Structures have new syntax. It takes a bit of time for you to get used to them. All right, so let's talk about cell arrays in detail. Okay, so this is how I create a, a cell vector. Okay, cell vec equals to, I use curly brackets instead of square brackets to do this one. Uh, so I have curly bracket and I enter a bunch of values, uh, you know, with different types and different sizes. So I have seven, which is a scalar, a, which is a character, one colon seven, that's a vector, and hello, that is a character vector. Now you see, that all of these values are preserved inside the cell array as is. Now, if I want to access the first element from the cell vector, I would use, again, curly brackets, okay? So cell vec of curly brackets of one is seven, two is a, three is the vector, four is the character vector. Now, so let's see what happens if I use parentheses instead of, you know, the curly brackets. So if I use a parenthesis, that would extract the entire cell from that vector, okay? Uh, not just the value, but the entire cell. We can validate this fact by checking the class of, let's say, cell vec of parenthesis of one, that is cell, okay? Now, let's try to check the class of the first element extracted using the curly brackets. So that would be double because seven is indeed a, a double scalar. Now let's do a quick recap of, you know, the properties of vectors and matrices. So vectors and matrices are created using square brackets. That's the example syntax for creating a matrix. All the elements are of the same type and size in vectors and matrices. You access elements using parentheses. Okay, uh, moving on to delete an element in a vector or a row or column in a matrix, you use empty vectors. Um, that's an example right there. Now cell arrays are moving. capable of storing elements of different size and type. I'd like you to remember this uh, particularly. Okay, so square brackets, fixed size storage, curly brackets, flexible size storage. So we'll see that in action here. So I'm initializing a cell matrix. So I'm, I'm starting with the curly bracket, 23, character A, a vector, and a string. If you already know how many cells you want in your you know, programming problem, it's wise to pre-allocate and you do it by using this syntax. You know, cell two comma two in parentheses is gonna create a two by two cell array. Now, yeah, let's check the class of cell mat. Uh, MATLAB says that it's a cell. Uh, 
if I try to access the one comma one element, I would use a curly bracket. So that's gonna give me the value uh, in one comma one location. So if I use parenthesis instead, so let's say I'm, I'm saying cell mat of parenthesis two comma one, that's gonna extract the entire cell, okay? So if I use the curly brackets two comma one, that's gonna extract the values in it. Now let us try to access this specific element from this entire cell mat. So what I would do is I would say cell mat curly brackets two comma one, that gets the vector, and within the vector, I want to extract the fourth element. So that's how you do it. You can expect this question in your exam. Obviously, if you use parenthesis, you'd run into an error. All right, so any of inbuilt function that works for a matrix, it works for cell matrix too, like length, size, number of elements. You could also use uh, the keyword end to access the you know last cell elements or whatever. All right, so if I wanted to delete like you know elements from a cell vector, so I would do it by you know writing it in in this syntax. Okay, so I'm going to access the entire cell using the parenthesis, and then I'm going to equate that to uh, empty brackets. So that way I, I get rid of this second element in this case. Now you have to be careful. If you use the curly brackets in, instead, it wouldn't delete the entire cell. It will just delete the value inside that cell. Okay. Uh, the same thing, if you want to delete an entire row or a column, you would uh, equate that to empty brackets.